In our last video, we looked at how knots could be used to signify numerical information. They can also be used to signify non-numerical information as well, though. So each one of these knots can be tied in multiple different ways. Single knots, for instance, can be tied in two different ways, both in an S direction and in a Z direction. Figure 8 knots can be tied in two different ways as well, in an S or a Z direction. And then long knots can also be tied in four unique ways. So they can be tied in an S direction, a Z direction, and they can also be tied up or down. So there's a lot of complication that can go into how each one of these, these knots was made, and these could all be potentially significant uh, signs in interpreting a kipu. We know, for instance, in post-conquest times, that knot direction was used to signify the difference between social groups. So let's take a look at how to actually tie each one of these knots in these different ways so that you can signify non-numerical information on your knots as well. Figure 8 knots can be tied in an S or Z direction. To tie the knot in the Z direction, I pass the end of the cord over to my right, pass it around the back of the cord, and then through the loop. Note the primary axis of the knot is tied in the Z direction, if you imagine the letter Z superimposed over the knot. To tie the knot in the S direction, I pass the end of the cord over to my left, pass it around the back of the cord, and then through the loop. Note the primary axis of the knot is tied in the S direction this time. Long knots can be tied in the S or Z direction as well. To tie a long knot in the Z direction, I also pass the end of the cord over to my right, and then wrap it around the cord like usual. Note that the primary axis is in the Z direction. To tie a long knot in the S direction, I instead pass the end of the cord over to my left and wrap it around the cord from that direction. Now the primary axis is in the S direction. Long knots can also be tied as up or down. When the straight axis of the cord coming out of the knot is facing down, we call it a down long knot. When the straight axis is facing up, we call it an up long knot. In order to make a down long knot, I form a loop and pass the top part of the cord through it as many times as the number that I want to signify. Then I tighten it up, and you can see that the bent axis of the cord coming out of the knot is at the top, and the cord is coming out of the knot straight at the bottom. Therefore, its straight axis is down. On the other hand, if I want to tie the long knot in the up direction, I instead wrap the bottom end of the cord around itself, as many times as the number I want to signify. This long knot is up because it has a bent axis at the bottom of the knot, and the cord comes out of the knot straight at the top. The straight axis is up. So long knots then can be tied in four distinct ways overall using Z, S, up, and down. Single knots can also be tied in the S or Z direction. In the same way as figure 8 and long knots, when I pass the end of the cord over to my right in order to tie the single knot, this forms a Z knot, with the primary axis of the knot in the Z direction. When I pass the cord over to my left, this forms an S knot, with the primary axis of the knot in the S direction. You're now ready to tie knots onto your kipu to signify both numerical data using knot hierarchy, as well as non-numerical data using knot direction.